Yellowstone volcano, USGS is warning over an unknown heavy breathing taking place below the caldera. And this is what a geologist reveals, this is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. The scientist is Ken Pierce, and he warns of heavy breathing occurring below the caldera. But he admitted he was not entirely sure what was causing this, what it was. The Yellowstone caldera gets its label as a supervolcano because of the capability to inflict devastation worldwide. The last time it erupted it was a VEI-8, the biggest uh, level. And hidden beneath the U.S. states of Wyoming, Montana and Idaho, the volcano is consistently monitored by USGS for any signs of an eruption that may be upcoming. But in 2016, geologist Dr. Pierce warned of a bizarre change he noticed and documented over the years. He informed the viewers on USGS YouTube channel, Yellowstone has been deflated and inflated in the last part of the Holocene time, or what we might call post-glacial time. One of the things that I've been working on is documenting changes in the Yellowstone caldera through time, he said. And he explains, part of the geology of Yellowstone is set up really nice for this. There is Yellowstone Lake and a channel of the Yellowstone River that goes across what is the threshold in the center of the caldera. If the caldera inflates, this makes Yellowstone Lake get higher. If the caldera deflates, this makes Yellowstone Lake get lower. And one of the connections between Yellowstone Lake is this threshold area is a channel of a Yellowstone River which is acting like a large pool. Dr. Pierce went on to explain how he identified changes that date back thousands of years. He said, in the past, when the caldera subsided, this area has acted as a channel of the active Yellowstone River, and it actually has so vig it was so vigorous it was undercutting its banks. If you go into the area just beyond the threshold of Yellowstone Lake, in this pool section of the Yellowstone River, you will... Uh, you go through slack water lake type deposits, sand deposits, and then you go into the gravel indicating the river was very active at the time. If we use these same cores to date the time that the Yellowstone River was acting like a river instead of a pool, we find that this was about 3,000 years ago. So 3,000 years ago Yellowstone was deflated and now it has inflated. This process of deflation and inflation I call the heavy breathing of the Yellowstone caldera because it's a big process. But Dr. Pierce admitted that USGS has no idea what's causing this. He said the actual volume of material involved is quite large. One of the people who surveyed Yellowstone is Dan Zurisen, and he had shown that both the caldera, when it inflates and swells up, and when it deflates, is a, my, a mirror image of the inflation. He says, so we know that in the short term, the pattern has been very symmetrical, which again suggests some symmetrical processes going on. Whether this is actually the intrusion of magma that somehow is subsiding after that, or some process related to geothermal features, such as inflation above the geothermal seal, in 1959, Yellowstone National Park faced one of its most shocking events, the Hebgen Lake earthquake. That was a 7.5 downgraded to 7.3. It took place on August 17th, around 11.30 at night. The natural disaster caused massive damage and considerable repairs and, uh, to, to the highways and to timbers that take place. Martin Stryker was 15 when it struck, camping with his family, and he detailed the uh, his horror. He said, at first I thought it was a thunderstorm because of the noise, of course. And then when you're in something like of that magnitude, you can almost hear the plates grinding together. And Yellowstone Volcano Observatory monthly update, October 1st. The recent works and news, Steamboat Geyser continued its record-setting year with four eruptions in September. 
September 3rd, 11, 17, 25, bringing the total number of eruptions in 2010 to 37. Field work in Yellowstone National Park during the month of September included maintenance on GPS stations in the park, this involving replacement of some GPS antennas, which in a few places resulted in offset in the station position. Geologists and geochemists also visited the park to study hot spring activity and to collect gas and water samples for later analysis. The seismicity during September 2019 the University of Utah seismograph stations responsible for the operation and analysis of Yellowstone Seismic Network located 71 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park. Of course, the National Park does not have all of the supervolcano. For example, Hebgen Lake is not in the park, it's just outside of the park in uh, Montana, Idaho, and that's where they had the 7.3 earthquake in 1959. And they've also had recently a 3.5 earthquake just outside of the park boundary. So all these things are not included in the earthquakes of Yellowstone. If you included all this, there's about three or four times that amount. Now the large event um, was a micro earthquake of 2.4 in the park, located 11 miles south of West Yellowstone, Montana, on September 8th at 1.59 p.m. No swarm activity was observed during September. Yellowstone earthquake activity remains at background levels, they said. And as for deformation, GPS stations scattered throughout the region indicate that ground subsidence of Yellowstone caldera has probably resumed. That subsidence, ongoing since 2015, appears to have been interrupted during the summer, possibly due to seasonal changes, but since early September, subsidence has again dominated. In the area of Norris Kaiser Basin, GPS data shows no significant changes over the past year. That area had been uplifting since 2015, but uplift ceased in October 2018. Yellowstone Volcano Observatory provides long-term monitoring of volcanic and earthquake activity in Yellowstone National Park. I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.